All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stefan, and you're watching the Invenzia channel. Is that the new name? I think it is. All right, anyway, today we're gonna to be looking at a few things that I did a while back. I created a stone block. I was thinking about making maybe Beatball 3. I don't know if you've seen any of my previous Beatball games. It's been about 15 years since I made them. Let's see now, I made the first Beatball over 20 years ago, and I get emails still today from uh, a lot of German people in particular, because uh, Beatball 1 was included in a, in a German magazine, you know, those distributed uh, discs that you get sent, uh, CD-ROM back then. So that was sent out to a lot of people, and I still get uh, a lot of emails from people saying, oh, right, thanks for Beatball. It defined my childhood. It probably didn't define their childhood, but they, they have found memories of it anyway. Well, to the point, I uh, wanted to make maybe a Beatball 3 game one day, so I shouldn't probably make another Arkanoid clone or Breakout clone, but if I do, I've started to play around with it a little bit. So what I ended up doing is that in Blender 2.8, I created a new stone block and I did a low poly and a high poly version. The high poly version, I used the clay modeling to get the details in for the edges and the cracks and things like that. And then for the low poly version, I just decimated the high poly version using the dec decimate modifier. And then what I did is uh, I brought everything into uh, Substance Painter. So that's a paid program. Uh, it costs a fair bit of money, about $20 for the indie version. So if it's out of your budget, uh, that would suck because it's a good program. It's really out of my budget too, but uh, I still end up paying for it for some stupid reason. <laughs> I hardly use it, but it's a great program. What am I going on about? Never mind. Substance Painter anyway is great for texturing, and I'll show you what I did with it here. So I added so a bit of a cartoony look for my textures, and then I brought everything into Unity just to show you what it looked like. So. All right, uh, I'm going on way too much. Let's get into things. So have a look at the video and I hope you like it. I hope you found some useful tricks again and uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Let's go. Press tab to get into edit mode and then change the scale of the box. Change it into a rectangular shape instead. So twice as wide and half as deep. Press control R and use the mouse wheel to add some loop cuts. The goal is to get some square segments of the mesh because we're going to be doing some clay modeling. Press Shift D to make a duplicate object for backup. Go to the Modifiers tab and add the Subdivision Surface modifier. Change the Simple mode and add the view count up to 5. An insane amount of polygons, but that's okay, we're going to be reducing them later on. And then I switch to the Sculpting tab and I start by using the Flatten brush. I also check the Dino Topo checkbox, so I get some additional detail when I start carving in the object. I change the detail size to 3 and refine method to subdivide edges. Then I use the flatten brush and I start by flattening all the edges of the rock, so they get nice and smooth. I do some extra bit of work on the corners as well. I speed up this in the video because it's basically a repetitive process over and over again and just go over all the edges smooth them out and flatten them out with, with the different brushes. By default, symmetry on the x-axis is enabled, so all the movements are duplicated on both sides. And after you've got a general shape, you can switch off the symmetry and start introducing some irregularities into your stone. You can switch between the different brush types when you do clay modeling. I switch between the flatten and the smooth brush quite a lot to refine the edges. I'll keep this section fast forwarded. Uh, I just go over the edges over and over again and I play around with the different uh, clay tools so I get a look that I want. I guess you could really go on forever but uh, just find a, something that you like which uh, seems to be good enough. Play around with different versions, different alternatives and you'll probably end up uh, after a while with some blocks that you like. I also sharpen up the edges a little bit by using the pinch tool and going around the edges that gives them a little bit of a sharper and more distinct cartoony look, I think. So it's up to you how you want to do it, but I use the pinch tool at least on the sides as well. Great, now we've got a nice artistic rock to begin with. Let's smash it up a little bit by creating some cracks in it. And for this I use the crease tool. Don't forget to have the Dino Topo checkbox marked and also that you have a low enough setting for the details. I, I use three pixels. 
If you don't have that, then the cracks will not look so good. Uh, you definitely need to add the details using Dino Topo during the stage. At the top bar, you can change the radius and the strength for the tools as well. I alternate this a little bit as I go. So sometimes I want it to have less strength and sometimes I want additional strength or a larger radius. I also use the pinch tool on the cracks themselves and there's no stopping you. You can really use uh, any brush type that you want to modify your mesh. But the pinch tool smoothens things out and I really like the cartoony look that it provides. And here's another tip for when you're clay modeling. If you hold the control key down and you use the brushes then it reverses the effect. So if you were adding clay before, holding control will remove clay. Okay, so the highly detailed mesh is now finished, so make a copy of it and call it LP for low poly or something like that. And then you add the decimate modifier. And we have a tremendous amount of polygons, so we're going to significantly reduce that. And hit Z on your keyboard and switch into wireframe mode so you can see the mesh better. You probably won't be able to use the slider, so manually type in the value. I type in the value 0.001 first, but even that's too detailed, so I drop it down to 0.0005 in the end. In the decimate modifier, you can also see the current face count, and anything under 200 is pretty good, I guess, for a block like this. Now we're done in the wireframe mode, so you can hit Z again and switch into look dev or into solid mode again. And we've finished all the modeling, so let's switch into the UV editing tab, and go to the UV dropdown and select Smart UV Unwrap. You can probably use the default settings, but I dropped the angle limit a little bit so I get more separated meshes to utilize the UV space a little bit more. It's a bit redundant for this block, but I actually use a plugin called UV Packmaster, and uh, it helps me to utilize the UV space a little bit better. Blender is pretty good at distributing the polygons, but uh, this uh, additional plugin can actually pack it a lot better, so you can use even more space for your texturing. I'll put a link in the description below to the UV Packmaster plugin. And finally we're done in Blender, so I export the low and the high poly versions of this block into separate FBX files that I'll be bringing into Substance Painter for texturing. And now welcome to Algorithmic's Substance Painter. I start a new project and I import the low poly version of the block that I created. Unfortunately, Substance Painter is a paid product, but it's a really, really good product. So if you're into texturing, I strongly suggest that you have a look at this one. Nowadays, they only have a subscription model and the indie license that I use runs for about $20 a month. So it does add up quite fast. Go to texture set settings and click on bake mesh maps. I untick the ID texture. I don't need that one. And then I browse to find the high poly version of my cracked stone block. Then click on bake material mesh maps. I click on the Layers tab again, and then I add a new Fill layer. And for the base color, I like to go for a dark gray, and uh, I prefer a blue tint to it as well. I think that looks a bit cartoony as well. And this one shouldn't be so shiny, so I also change the layer's roughness value into a higher value, so it's not so reflective anymore. I pull down the metallic value as well for the same reason. And then I add another fill layer and I pull up the roughness again and I change the color once again to a grayish blue color, but this time a little bit brighter. And I right click on the layer and then I add a black mask. And then I right click on the black mask itself and I click on add generator. And I click on the generator button and I edit the mask. The mask editor already comes with a set of default values. So as you can see, the block already has some wear and tear on the edges where you can see the brighter parts shine through. On the right here, you can see that you can affect a lot of these settings by pulling the sliders to have the effect increase or decrease. You can affect things like curvatures and things like that. For this block, I ended up just playing around with the settings and I changed the color back and forth from dark to bright. 
and uh, I also tried to invert the mask back and forth to see what type of a look I wanted to have. So I also toyed with the idea of having worn edges as well as sort of dark parts in the cavities. I guess there's no real right or wrong things to do in here. You play around with the sliders to find some settings that you like. In the end I decided to keep the mode to edges and I also clicked invert. So basically that fills in the opposite of the edges, so the interior of the stone itself and any cavities. Then I select the fill layer and I press Ctrl D to duplicate it and then I change the base color to a brighter one. I click on the black mask and I go into the mask editor. I change the curvature to switch off the inversion and I change the settings to make it less prominent. Under Curvature I also reduce the large and the medium sections and I increase the fine sections to get a much finer worn edge around the block. The blending mode for the layer is Additive, so Linear Dodge, so I also ended up making the brightness of the layer lower and to compensate for everything going darker I changed the base color of the base layer to a brighter one to bring it back up to a grey stone. So the stone is looking way too clean, let's add some dirt to it, so I add another fill layer and I change the color of the fill layer to a brownish dirty color. I increase the roughness again to get rid of some reflections and then I right click on the layer and I add a black mask and this time I use the smart mask preset dirt. In the mask editor now for the dirt layer it's possible to change some of the settings to affect the texture. Here I change the slider for the texture scale to make the dirt a little bit bigger and I reduce the contrast a little bit to make it less prominent. And as usual I can never make up my mind so I kept playing around with the scale, the brightness and the contrast sliders until I got somewhat happy. And once the dirt layer was finished I wanted to add a more organic green moss layer so I added another fill layer and I changed the base color of it to a green, dark green color. This time I used a different smart mask called Ground Dirt. I went into the mask editor and went down to the texture and reduced the scale and the effect of the layer. So that's pretty much what I did for this stone. I had a base gray layer and I had a dark layer in the cavities and I had a bright edge layer around the sharper edges and then I had a dirt layer with a smart mask for dirt and then I had a final layer for the grass or the moldy grass. Okay we're finished only one thing left to do and that's to go to file and export textures and I work in unity so I select the unity 5 preset for the PBR physically based rendering materials and then I uh, just check that all the maps are included and I export the maps as individual PNG files. This includes the albedo map for all the colors, it includes metallic map for the shiny areas and the roughness and it also includes a normal map and all of those were baked from the high definition mesh that we created using the sculpting in Blender. Here I've imported the low poly stone block into Unity and I've also imported the textures and created a material using the albedo, shininess and normal maps. Thanks for watching that video, it turned out, uh, well, it wasn't too long I don't think because I did fast forward a bit. Hope you found it useful and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to watch another video. Also comment down below if you want to see some more details about the videos or if you thought this one was uh, good or not good or whatever you think, put it in the comments below and I'll try to adapt and if you got any requests for videos or things that I make, give me a shout in the comments as well. I'll try to accommodate your needs. So have a great weekend and I will talk to you soon again in another video. So take care, bye.